Hey everyone, so I had the opportunity of watching world number one and queen of clay Iga Sriontek in her first practice session on her way to winning the French Open title this year. And in this video, I'm really excited to share the whole session with you, along with some of my thoughts and some tips that you can take away for your own tennis. Let's get into it. So today was day one of the French Open and I had tickets to Philippe Chatrier, Roland Garros' centre court. But as play wasn't due to start until midday, I spent most of the morning roaming around the practice courts, which if you've seen my videos before, you'll know is my favorite place to be at pro tournaments. You get up close to the players and for me as a coach, I absolutely love seeing the drills that they use and the way that the players and coaches interact. Some coaches get really involved in the sessions whilst others sit back and save their words for important moments. This year I had the pleasure of watching quite a few players train such as the two smoothest Italian players Fognini and Musetti, Paola Bedosa, Matteo Arnaldi, Ribakina, and briefly Carlos Alcaraz. But the one I really wanted to see was Iga as she had been dominating on clay for the last few years and I was really intrigued to see her practice as she's a player that I haven't seen much of live. The great thing about the French Open is that you can see the player's practice schedule on the app. So I headed over early to get a spot. When she stepped onto court, you could visibly see that she was soaked in sweat. She'd clearly just had a decent warm up in the gym in preparation for this session. On the court with her was her coach, Tomasz Wiktorowski, former coach of Radwanska and the Polish Fed Cup team, along with her sparring partner and later on in the session, psychologist Daria Abramowicz. Iga started the session hitting with her sparring partner in the service boxes before moving to playing left-handed forehands. This was a nice way to create focus and develop the connection between brain, body and ball and is especially good for double-handed backhand players like Iga. She did this for about 30 seconds before moving on to the classic bow tie drill where one player hits cross court whilst the other hits straight but she did this with an open racket face using the continental grip. After going straight for 30 seconds she changed to go cross court. These exercises all seem to be a part of a well-oiled routine spending just 30 seconds on each one. Next up, Thomas jumped in with a variation of the drill where Eager was to change direction with a slice when the time was right. Open racket face work is great for developing touch and feel, but was interesting to see Eager using it in this way. Next up was a minute or so of volley to ground stroke before heading back to the baseline to groove her ground strokes up and down the middle. She did this for about five minutes. So far you'll notice that there's nothing out of the ordinary with the drills that she's doing with her coach, but pay attention to her footwork. The only time she's still is when she strikes the ball. Otherwise, she's always bouncing on her toes. This is something that's striking when you watch Iga play as her footwork is phenomenal, especially on the clay. Because of the touch exercises at the start, she already has a good feel for the ball. And because of her physical warm up in the gym, she's already ripping it just eight to 10 minutes into her session. At this point, she changed ends with her sparring partner. Players tend to change ends during practice, just like they would in a match, so that they can adapt to the wind and the light conditions. You can see here at the change of ends is the perfect opportunity for Thomas, her coach, to give us some tips. Without really hearing him or speaking Polish, I wouldn't like to make assumptions about what he's saying, but you can clearly see him here talking about the flight of Iga's forehands. Naturally on clay, having more shape to your shot or more arc can be really beneficial as it kicks out much higher on this surface. One thing that I found interesting but makes a lot of sense is that Iga went back onto court and practiced cross-court backhands. Now, the reason I found this interesting is pretty much every single player and coach that I watch in practice goes into cross-court forehands first. But it actually makes a lot more sense to start with cross-court backhands, as you'll notice that players when they go up and down the middle tend to pretty much hit only forehands, even Iga. So prioritizing the backhand next is very important. She's also gonna find herself in that cross-court backhand battle a lot in her next few matches. And so after this drill, still practicing cross-court, she was then running around and hitting inside-out forehands, which logically is what Iga's trying to find in those cross-court battles. She was clearly practicing all of the shots that she's planning on using to win the tournament.
Next up, cross-court forehands followed by more volleys, but this time 30 seconds of them were done with one arm behind the back. This is another good way to develop a better brain, body and ball connection, and afterwards you really appreciate your offhand when you bring it back into action. A few overheads were next and then they played a few points starting with a loopy feed and a drive volley. This is another shot that's going to come in useful on the clay as players tend to hit that ball with much more height over the net. Eager is going to have more opportunities to step in and take the ball out of the air. Thomas then jumped in again for some drive volley feeds and then a drill working on Eager's up and back movement. He started with hand feeds then moved on to racket feeds. It's a really important movement pattern for the claim as your opponent has more opportunity to push you back with those high bounces. But for me as a coach it was really interesting to see that Eager's coach wasn't necessarily feeding the ball in the most realistic way. He was simply feeding from around the service line with no topspin. But I guess here the key was just to give Eager a few repetitions to feel comfortable and in her groove before match day tomorrow. Eager then played some more live ball drills, focusing on targeting her opponent's backhand before hitting some serves to wrap up the session. I would imagine that Eager would have had another practice session later on that day, focused more around point play, as she wasn't due to play her first round until the next day. After the practice, I headed to my seats on Philippe Chatrier to watch the end of Naomi Osaka's win against Caroline Garcia and then Carlos Alcaraz make light work of JJ Wolf. As you can imagine, I found watching Eager's practice sessions super fascinating and I hope that you found it as interesting and valuable as I did. If so, let me know which other players you'd like to see and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Take care.